my name is Daniel Morchain. I'm from Venezuela and I work on adaptation sometimes as a researcher, practitioner, policy advisor, number of roles, or artist, I like to think. Uh, why is art so important for me? Because I feel very happy doing it. I feel tremendously happy. I feel very true uh, when I try to do my work on climate adaptation through arts. And I feel that people receive it in that same way, being happy, being touched, being honest, making themselves be more honest with the work that they're doing. Theater is one way to do that, participatory theater. I think it's a way that helps people escape the realities and the constraints that they and we are living under. And through expanding our understanding through that theater, through being part of creating a story, that also helps us move to a place where we say, well, there could be a better way forward. Why not go there? What's limiting us? What is, uh, you know, what is stopping us from going there? My name is Melanie Kritzka del Villar. I'm a German Filipina visual artist and I mainly use painting to communicate my vision. Now, to me, the climate crisis is but a symptom of a much deeper malaise. We're going through a spiritual crisis, a crisis of the human soul. So instead of looking at symptoms, let's see what's actually underneath. We're not only disconnected from our social and natural environments, we're disconnected from our own inner self, one that is intrinsically linked to the planet. I see no other way but to do the inner work first, to work on transforming and healing from within, and to become whole again, because the outer is a reflection of our inner world. Now this journey of transformation and healing, it takes courage, it takes patience, it takes forgiveness, it takes acting out of love and compassion instead out of fear. Most of all, it takes sitting with our own pain first instead of running away from it. As an artist, I intend to create images and symbols that hopefully resonate with a wider audience and help point towards a new story of healing and empowerment. Hi, I'm Dania from Journey of a Braid. I am a Mexican artist based in Dallas, and my practice is all about tracing the invisible thread that braids us together, and the visual reminder of braiding as a metaphor for what we need to do as a society, to put aside our labels and get together and fight the greatest fight of all, which is climate change. We need to live in equilibrium with the land. We need to live in equilibrium with the earth. So I've been creating braiding circles that show how united we are. Together, I braid people from every nationality every religion and through the circles we talk about what that energy is about and why we need to unite right now when the world needs us more than ever. Um, I've also been doing these piñatas, there are naked piñatas for world change which are all about seeds instead of dead matter there are seeds that get planted and that bring us a brighter future. I know we can do this but we must braid ourselves together. My name is Anthony Chieng. I am from Kenya I am a conservation photographer and a filmmaker. My main inspiration is when I see people of all ages and races taking action to conservation through watching uh, the short films I've made or the images that I've made. And that keeps inspiring me to keep on doing more and more. We are in a world where information has to be shared and if information is shared, and people have the knowledge of doing what is right, we will mitigate a lot of issues, including climate change. Hi, I'm Molly Farrell. I'm a photographer and filmmaker from the United States with a focus on environmental and human rights stories. I believe that photography and film are powerful tools for inspiring climate action because they're able to touch our hearts. And when we see an image or a film that really makes us feel something, we become invested in the outcome of that story. I personally think that stories involving animals are very effective in moving us to take climate action. Storytelling allows people to feel personally connected to what's happening on the planet. And feeling that connection can help to inspire and empower people to become part of a global solution. Hello, my name is Joanna vasquez Arong, and I'm a filmmaker from the Philippines. Lately, I've been drawn to creating films centering around trauma and in the last years, um, living in the Philippines, we've had quite a few disaster, natural disasters and a few of my shorts centered around the pain and trauma created by these disasters. One of my films, To Calm the Pig Inside, is basically a 
a personal reflection on the trauma created by Super Typhoon Haiyan, both on a personal level and on a community level. And my approach to this film was really to share people's experiences on dealing with, with their trauma and pain. Um, and this includes delving into their personal journey or their personal dreams and, and even myths. Households are responsible for two-thirds to three-fourths of whole greenhouse gases emissions on the planet. And the food we eat is responsible for 80% of biodiversity loss. This means by adjusting our lifestyles, we can make a huge difference. Films, music, art and creative communication are a reflection of our culture. They shape our values and design our aspirations. They are crucial in shifting our dreams from more, bigger and faster to lighter, healthier and simpler. What is a happy life or a good life? We need new narratives depicting sustainability in an aspirational way. And it's clear that films and creative communications have a massive role to play. We know a better future can happen. It's just a matter of showing how it can be a reality. Let's start telling the sustainable side of the story. Hi, my name is Megan Walsh. I'm an artist and architect from the USA. I work in a tradition of ancient stone mosaic, but with a contemporary composition, including lots of other types of materials, including things like tire scrap from the sides of roads. I particularly like to use things that are very difficult to reuse or that in our society may be deemed as ugly. I like to eke out the beauty in those ugly things. Like many of you, my day job involves thinking, reading, and writing. But I really believe that if we lose touch with our physical reality, this is actually one of our greatest risks to climate vulnerability. It's also a social segregator, and it could lead us to many problems in the future. So together, we're going to have to build back better. And one of those ways is for us to get our own hands dirty and learn a little bit more about materials, engage in them every day. I recommend that everyone at this conference have some kind of thing that they make, whether it's cooking or knitting or any kind of craft. You don't have to go so far as becoming an artist, but definitely dive right in and make something every day. My name is Simone Santholz and I am leading the Urban Futures and Sustainability Transformation Program at UNU EHS. As a researcher, I'm trying to find out how to make cities more sustainable and climate friendly. But this knowledge usually is published in scientific journals or glossy magazines. That's great, but it's definitely not enough. We need to reach everyone. We need to bring the message across to everyone so that we all know how urgent it is to act on climate. Um, this acting on climate, on the other hand, can also be an opportunity to make our cities more livable, more green, nicer. And here art and film can show us these potentials and it can help us to create visions and show how our cities could look like in future. Film can make us understand these contexts and can also make us dream. And that is why I am so particularly excited to work with artists and filmmakers in the Transformative Urban Coalitions project.